Multiculturalism, despite containing the word culture, is by definition the opposite to culture, and thus corrosive to it. Also by definition, a multicultural society will develop a master culture which necessitates the dissolution of the cultures it contains in order to gel its people together in commonality. Culture, in the sense of language, ways and artifacts of a people, shares exactly the same word root as every other sense of that word. It comes from the Latin colere, which can be translated into our current English, cultivate. To cultivate means to guard and refine something. In terms of horticulture, it means to refine a plant to bring forth a particular quality for a particular purpose. In terms of agriculture, it means to refine the land to grow a particular vegetable or grain and protect that land from weeds and other vegetation encroaching on it and strangling your crop. The word culture being used to define the language, ways, and artifacts of a people is no mistake. For millennia backward in time, family, civic leaders, tutors, and priests instilled the youth with the collective wisdom and sensibilities of their people, generation after generation, also retelling stories of great men and women who stood on the very ground that they do, both protecting and forging the civilization the current generation now enjoys the gifts of. Most cultures stressed that the powerful wisdom and inspiring tales being handed to the youth came with an obligation to protect that wisdom, those stories, and the material security of their people for the benefit of their progeny. In an Irish and European context, this unbroken chain has been severed in four short generations. If there's an Irish people to speak of in 100 years, I am certain this will be looked back upon by wiser people as a great travesty and probably a very selfish act. The abstract nature of the human creature allows us to objectify and devalue living things, including land bases, turning them into symbols in our minds as opposed to living realities that we are a part of. A land base is an ecosystem, which a creature depends upon to survive. Most creatures are prone to overhunt or overgraze if their population exceeds carrying capacity or if they are confined to an area, just like we humans are prone to do this in emergencies. But what you will never see another animal do is destroy the entire land base upon which it survives. Okay, no segue at all. The, ne the next premise is, the culture as a whole and most of its members are insane. I don't need to talk about that, do I? <laughs> uh, the culture is driven by a death urge, an urge to destroy life. <coughs> I don't know if this happens to you, but sometimes I'll just be sitting here, I'll be doing something else. And suddenly, a vision of Angelina Jolie will appear before me. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of people turned around and looked. Um, and she'll stand there, just sort of suspended in space. Makes me happy. <laughs> it used to scare me back when she was with Billy Bob. Because they weren't good for each other. You know that he, each one had a vial of the other's blood around their neck? It's really creepy. And then you know where, where she has his name tattooed? I'll bet she was wishing his name was Bob, or Ed. Bob is better than Billy Bob, actually. Speaking of genitals, did you know that Nicole Kidman does not like to wear underwear? I read that in the newspaper, so it must be true. Does anybody know what's the indigenous name for this place right here? Do you know what the indigenous name for this place is? That's the people, right? Okay. I'm sorry. The land of the of the Chinook. And what is what is that name in in the indigenous language? Like where I live, 
is called Tutnes in the Talawa language. It means metal long. That's the particular place I live, which I'm not like showing this off. It's like it took me three years or four years of living there, and I finally just asked one and a tall person. Um, so the, the point is, I'm sorry. Use the mic. Use the mic. Sorry, sorry. Um, the point is that it is literally insane that I know what is on Angelina Jolie's genitals and what is not on Nicole Kidman's, but. It took me about three or four years of living where I do to learn that there was a massacre of about 250 Indians about two miles from where I live at a place called Yontaket. Another massacre of another 100 Indians or so at a place called Hawanket right over here. And then right over here there was another massacre at a place called Achillet. And I mean it's crazy that I know that, by, by the way, who won, who, oh God, so you're all here instead of watching the World Series. That's pretty fucking cool. What was the score before you left? Oh, do I keep, I keep moving away, sorry. Yeah, I can just hold it. Yeah, just, yeah. Um, anyway, it's insane that I know that the Mets would have had a better chance if Pedro weren't hurting, but I can't name 10 species of edible plants and and fungi who live within 100 yards of my home. That's, I mean, part of the reason that we don't defend the places we live is because we don't live there. We live with Brad and Angelina, and we live with Pedro and his hurt hip and his hurt toe, and we live with uh, Kenny Rogers and the smudges on his hands. And, okay, so like I said, I don't think I can name 10 species of edible plants and fungi within 100 yards of my home. There's blackberries. Huckleberries, salal, thimbleberry, salmonberry, blackberry. <laughs> oh, and there's those big red mushrooms with the white dots. <laughs> I was thinking, if I ate one of those, I could take out a dam all by myself. <laughs> I could take out a dam with one finger. <laughs> we are threatening the very existence of this earth by our ecological genocide of it. There is a direct correlation with our loss of ind indigenous culture and the destruction of our habitat. Without our relationship to the stories and wisdom of our ancestors, we lose care for the environment. Without our environment, we lose care for the stories and wisdom of our ancestors, and the cycle appears to feed into itself. In an Irish context, the centuries of British aggression and genocide has seen an astronomical reduction in the flora and fauna on this island. In certain moments of that history, it seemed wickedly intentional, such as that of Oliver Cromwell. This has accompanied the death of our language, mythologies, and instruments of culture. That long and brutal history is a crime that is yet to be recognized by even ourselves, never mind it being addressed in any conscious way. To bring this conversation back to multiculturalism, I pose this question to you. Why? When we have only just come to an era of free information and record levels of literacy, and are now in a position to redeem our culture before we are conclusively swallowed up by the Anglo-American superculture, are we then bringing hundreds of thousands of strangers onto our tiny island and giving them equal footing with us? I don't mean to insult our visitors. After all, they're as victimized and alienated from their roots as we are. But with all due respect, they're not visitors. The vast majority of them will never leave once they have arrived. Their willingness to leave the land of their ancestors and permanently settle elsewhere, instead of staying and fighting for it, should tell us that they don't care what happens to it. It also tells us that they would find it very hard to understand the love we have for our ancestors and the land. 
The few of us left here who are sensitive to the call of our ancestors and the precious fragility of our land will find ourselves ever more rapidly in the minority. Who amongst us gives a shit about our natural fisheries and lifted a finger to stop the Chinese salmon farms from ruining them? Who amongst us gives a shit about our forests and lifted a finger to stop them from being sold as a commodity? Who amongst us gives a flying fuck about Tara and lifted a finger to preserve this centerpiece of Irish history and identity? Very few of us. So what on earth gives us the idea that the newcomers to our island will find any significance in these concerns? Has that even entered our minds? Has that suddenly become wrong for a people to factor in when opening their borders to strangers? A culture of cultures, with no dominant culture to oversee it, is what awaits Ireland within all our lifetimes. What will arise out of this hodgepodge Euro-Afro-Asian-American melting pot is a Frankenstein's monster, only recognizable to us today because it will speak English. The bare minimum to call yourself Irish in this futuristic nightmare. The language that allows a person to access business and the most existentially vacant culture on the planet to date. The Anglosphere. In 2005, former president of Dublin City University, Professor Ferdinand von Pronzinski, projected that ethnic Irish will be a minority in their own country by 2050. Speaking with the Irish Times, Pronzinski said, Whether this turns out to be an accurate prediction or not, we have to prepare for a very different kind of society. It needs to be a planned process to ensure our skills needs are being met. A very substantial increase in population will be needed over a long period of time. And I don't think people have quite realized this yet. In a speech at DCU, he warned, or threatened, that if the Irish attempt to stop the flow of immigrants, it will seriously harm our economy and push us onto the economic periphery of Europe. In 2011, census data estimated 15.5% of residents in Ireland are not ethnically Irish. This is up an astronomical 15% from 1999. In 2009, the Galway City Development Board told us that 20% of Galway residents aren't ethnically Irish. Informal statistics, as of 2014, estimates 20% of Irish residents aren't ethnically Irish. With the recent rush through European borders, the Irish government has pledged to take 20,000 refugees in 2015, 5% of our overall population, and 6% if you only count ethnic Irish. Despite our state being unable to cope with the number, never mind house its own homeless and feed its own impoverished, activists are begging the government to take even more. And seen as the borders aren't closing anytime soon, Angela Merkel's government is insisting that we share the burden of the millions that are flooding into Germany. Call me alarmist, but the prediction cast in 2005 by the Führer, uh, sorry, Professor Ferdinand von Pranzinski, is now obsolete, as we're looking at losing demographic prominence in our own country by about 10% per year. So, what has this got to do with multiculturalism, you might ask? Absolutely nothing. They're just fucking people in on top of us.